and amazed, and he's purposed us to rule and reign with him for eternity. <laughs> this dispensation is just the beginning. On the scale of eternity, we're just on the beginning. Lord, let us live big for you in this, in this time on this earth that we have, God. Let us live big for you, Lord. Live big for you, God. Make us so real, Lord, for you. Make us so real for you, Jesus. <laughs> Lord, may every heart in this place be open wide to that which you wish to do tonight, God. May every heart be open wide, Lord. Yield it to your spirit. Psalms 149 says, <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with the dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Lord, you alone are expectation tonight, Lord. You alone are expectation. Verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nation and punishments on the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Pray, praise the Lord. We're talking about when we're ruling and reigning with Christ Jesus in eternity there. Hallelujah. Psalms 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. How excellent his greatness. Praise him with the sound of a trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. There's a sound of a people rising. There's a sound of a people rising. With the praise of the Lord on their lips. With the sound of praise coming forth from them.
Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him for His excellence. Praise Him for His greatness. <laughs> and the loving kindness He showed unto us. We could, we could be here all night just praising. I believe there's something real that happens on the inside, even when you're just singing a simple song like, we are your people, we are your remnant. It goes beyond what we can imagine in the depths of our being. And as we hook up with that, the spirit of the Lord, that he has his way, and as it's proclaimed out, out into the earth, it goes beyond just us in this building tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Speak a little spoken word to you tonight. Lord, as your word goes forth, touch every life, God. Lord, that no one will, uh, will leave this place the same, God. And those that came in fiery will go out fiery still. fire -e -er, Lord. Lord, you know what that adjective is? That word, Lord, more fiery, stoked up. On fire in the fire. On fire in your fire. Who the sun sets free is surely free indeed. Don't need no apologetics for the incorruptible seed. Works on the inside by faith is received. Filled with the riches that supply my every need. This word of God that must be believed. It's life-giving water. It's the breath that I breathe. True transformation that makes my heart concede. Through the ways of righteousness I'm following his lead. Flowing in the spirit surrounded by his peace. Supernatural signs that bring me to my knees. Seeking the increase of the one who'll never cease whose promises are sure, perfect and complete, more than rhyme and reason, beyond time and seasons, this everlasting covenant that is more than just appeasing. Oh, how I need him. It was love that pleased him to carry the cross, to take the punishment for treason. But God, through Calvary's cross, has closed the gap, restoring the connection. We're back on the map of eternity's plan, the master uh, design of the divine for man. Forever will I stand, worshiping the king who formed me by his hand, who put in place the star numbered the grains of sand who opened up the ocean and told the trees where to stand under his command the supreme sovereign of this land we're a chosen generation a holy nation showing forth his praises testifying of salvation our habitation not on this earth but in the heavenlies the place of our birth for what was once beneath has been born from above to now dwell with him in peace joy and love in him living moving having our being testifying of righteousness for we are the redeemed our motivation heaven saturation permeating the place of our influence and conversation Pentecostal, full gospel, following the chief apostle, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, the administer of this gospel. Thank you, Jesus. For we are the possessors of this promise. We are the possessors of this promise. Say, I'm a possessor of this promise. I'm a possessor of this promise. I'm a possessor of his promise. We're living in the days of promise. Jesus said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. 
We're living in the day of the Lord, the day of promise. The outpouring of the Spirit on all flesh. The days that Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel, Obadiah, and the list goes on, long to be in. The days that Elijah longed to be in. The day of the Lord. Please turn with me to Philippians 4. Verse 4, I'm going to remind you just briefly tonight of a few of the commands. Keep us in the way of the Lord. Keep us flowing in the realms of the Holy Spirit. Is everyone there? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your meekness be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your, shall keep your hearts and mine through Jesus Christ. Verse 8. We're going to meditate on this a little bit. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, things of good report, if there be any virtue, there being a praise, think on these things. Please turn with me to Romans 12, verse 9. It's good to be here with you all tonight. I love the abiding place. So thankful for this place. There's such a great destiny on this church. May, never, may none of us ever forget the destiny that God has for this place. There's a powerful word that went for Sunday morning. But I tell you, you know, I go, I go elsewhere and I see churches that just, you know, it's so, it's so routine and so uh, boxed in, and you come to a place like the abiding place where the Holy Spirit is given free reign, and I tell you, don't take lightly or forget what you have. It's easy to, you know, it's easy to come in here and just, you know, it becomes normal for you, but don't, don't let it become just something that is status quo. You got to be on your toes. <laughs> the 
say that again. Don't let it be status quo. Rather be on your toes. Follow in the spirit. So I, I just want to say that, I want to say it one more time, that just exhorting you, there's such a grace in this place. Such a grace in this place. <laughs> Believe me, they will come from the north and the south and the east and the west. <laughs> For there is a banner that is lifted high in this place. Not the programs of men, but of God. <laughs> The fiery word of God that doesn't care what men think, <laughs> but rather the glory of God and his saints revealed. Church, let us stand in the gap for this generation. This is the abiding place. I already hold it special. I know that it's the remnant. I know it's like the special forces in the kingdom of God. But let's push the envelope. Let's push it. Let's push it. Let's push it. as we were singing the night in worship, you know about this, there's a generation that hasn't seen him. There's a generation of youth that haven't seen him. We want them to see him through us in our lives. I recently heard a statistic that 25% of this generation is not even given a chance to live because of abortion. And I know it's heavy stuff, and I don't mean to bring the, the room down, but it's, you know, it's serious business. And you don't think the heart of the Father breaks for that. <laughs> He's ready. The question is, are you? Amen. Amen. This generation, this generation, I believe with all my heart that it will be this generation that will see the glory of God. Why things wax worse and worse, the glory of God is just going to come in and just blow up the place. The Shekinah glory of God, it's going to be like a nuclear explosion, a fallout of heaven. I should say the f overflow of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just got to say it one more time. The, what is in this place? What is in this place? Do not take for granted. Rather, get on your face so you might participate with it, with it, with it.
You don't want to be one when it's the time, when it's game time to be on the sidelines. You want to be in it. The game, when the game is afoot, you want to be in it. In it to win it. Hallelujah. I'm just going to take you to, to one more verse of scripture here. Commands that the Lord has for us. Romans 12, verse 9, we're going to look through 18. Let love be without hypocrisy. We just want that love of God to just so saturate us, so, so permeate our being that we show forth the love of the Father to everyone, first in our, in our community, in this church, but also to the, to the lost, to those who have not seen. Abhor what is evil. Why? Because what is evil will rob you. Going on here, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another. Isn't that, uh, that's just amazing, you know, the love of the Father. Give, give preference to one, of an, uh, one another. That Father's love that just, you know, gives preference for the children, whatever Whatever the, the children want or need or desire, you know, you just, you just want to fulfill it in, in even more. That, that love of the Father. Uh, verse 11, not lagging in diligence. Not lagging in diligence. In the Proverbs, it says, the hand of the diligent will rule. Or may we be diligent. Diligent with your cause, Lord. Diligent with your word. Diligent with your purposes. Diligent in business for the kingdom. Fervent in spirit. I know there are those who are fervent in spirit in this place. Fervent. Those who know how to pray the fervent prayers, the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous. The righteous, we are called the righteous, for he is our righteousness. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel good things happening. <laughs> Oh, that peace that passes understanding. That joy that wells up on the inside and overflows. That abundance of his love. Ah. Verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. We just want to be hospitable people. <laughs> Verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. I'm reminded of the scripture that the Lord says about, you know, he dwells with the humble and the contrite, the almighty, the Lord of hosts, with the humble, the meek, 
in Matthew 5, 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Verse 17, repay no evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Lord, we are your chosen people. We are your remnant, God. We are your remnant on the rise, Lord. On the rise. Lord, we wait on you. We look to you. Lord, you supply all we need according to your riches and glory. You alone satisfy and have the words of life. Just stand with me tonight. Father, we're hungry for you. Father, we're so hungry, Lord. <laughs> Lord, we're going to hear the word tonight and we're going to be on the move, God. We're going to be on the move, Lord. Be on the move. Going to be on the move. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to remind you about the differences between faith with action and faith without action. Faith without works, faith without action is just dead. But faith with action, with moving with God, so great, so, so great is it. Lord, I thank you that you raise up people of faith in this place. People of faith, Lord, that know how to move in faith, God. Lord, that when the enemy comes in like a flood to stop, they know how to stand up in the power of your name and proclaim the things that you have purposed, God. <laughs> Lord, I thank you that nothing can stop your purposes on this property, that this property yields up to the kingdom of God in the mighty name of Jesus, that there'll be no more hindrances, that the miracle, the miracle happens now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that this will be a light as a lighthouse, as a lighthouse, a beacon for you that shines for you, God, that draws men to you. Oh, that it will be a school of evangelism that causes and sends forth those into the nations. Ha, <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we rejoice in you and we rejoice in your goodness, Lord, in your steadfast love. We're just going to go back into a, a time of worship and praise. I just encourage you guys to just wait on the Lord. If you have need of anything, you can just stand in his, in his presence. I'm going to have Pastor Geneva come forth here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for a passionate people that will pour themselves out on you. Hallelujah. You, can you think of something that you're more excited about than Jesus? Well, there's a lot of you that can't, but I will tell you, there's some of you that smile bigger when something else happens to you that you think's a little bit more exciting, you, smile, you have that big smile on your face, maybe it's opening a Christmas present or a birthday present or, you know, 
seeing somebody you hadn't seen for a long time, and you'll jump up and down, and you'll squeal. But when it comes to the house of the Lord, you'll yawn a few times and raise your hand back and forth and get your mind on something else. You know, you can have everything God has for you. You don't have to be left out. You don't have to be left out of this. You can come on in to the realms of glory. You can enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You can pour yourself out on him like he poured himself out for you. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I tell you this, I, 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 know, I know Joshua pretty good. He's my nephew. I know, I know Pastor Mark pretty good. He's my brother. You know, I know my son David pretty good. He's my son. I know Ruthanna pretty good. She's my niece. And I'll tell you that there's nothing that they get more excited about that they pour themselves out more on than they do Jesus. There's something about those that will give themselves to worship. Now, you can't say, um, well, I can't sing, so I'm not a worshiper. That has nothing to do with it. I, half the time, I can't carry a tune in a bucket. But that, that doesn't stop me from worshiping. That doesn't stop me from worshiping right over top of all the, the music that's going on. That isn't, that isn't the issue whether you can sing or not. It's will you be a worshiper? Will you pour yourself out on him like yeah. he poured himself yeah. out on you? Yeah. Because if you do, you will touch heaven. You will go into a realm and, uh, and a place of relationship with him that you never dreamed of going into. But if you come in with yawn and with the busyness of this life, look, we all have it too. Pastor Mark works so many jobs, it's, it, it's ridiculous. And we're all very, very busy. But you know what? When the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is standing before you, you push all the mess out of the way and you enter into the realms of his glory. Amen. You enter in. You forget about the stuff. And look, look at the one who died for you. And rejoice around the greatest Christmas presents you will ever receive. Pour yourself out on the one you love. If you really love him, you will. And I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna help you here. If you're not coming in and you're not pouring yourself out on Jesus, if you're not passionate for him, just say, Father, I want to be passionate for you. I want to be so excited for you. Lord, I want to be more passionate for you than I am anything else on this earth. Lord, I want to pour myself out on you, Jesus. Lord, make me so hungry and so thirsty for you, God, that I won't be on the inside, standing on the outside, inside of the church, but yet standing on the outside of the church, looking in at what's going on and yawning a few times and, and trying to think of how many times you can go to the restroom and all of that kind of stuff. And let me, let me just give you a little thing right there. I need to go to the restroom. That's an evil spirit speaking a lot of times. I mean, sometimes there is a natural reasoning, but I have been with people that get up and go to the restroom two or three times during service, and then you go to, a, you go to something else with them, and they'll go four hours and won't stop at the restroom. And I'm like, I need to stop at the restroom. I mean, when I'm not in church, I need, I, I need to go. But, I mean, in church, get captivated. Get captivated, and don't let the enemy tell you you need to get up Break off the anointing. I'll tell you, a lot of people that have demon activity in their life, the enemy will get them out into the restroom to kind of break that anointing that's getting down in there, breaking the yokes off of them because the Word sets you free. You, you, we don't have to take you and drag you out to a deliverance room and get you delivered. If you'll sit there and listen to the Word, the Word will set you free. And the demons that have has, hassled you and harassed you will have to go. They'll have to go in the name of Jesus. They won't be able to hang out any longer because you know why? You took a hold of that word, that word of truth that set you free. And then you'll be able to say, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Well, we just want to give everybody a chance to worship the Lord. Continue on worshiping the Lord, but worship the Lord in giving. Tonight, we're going to um, bless the Lord with our giving to the church, and we're going to bless Joshua tonight also 
in our giving. And so in that, the Lord laid something on my heart about Isaac and how Isaac went in to Egypt in a time of famine. And everybody is in desperate situation all around him because it's famine. And he takes his seed and he puts it in that dry powder. When it's not rained a long time, we can, we can kind of understand that here around San Diego. If you have an area of your yard that you do not water and you go and you pick up that dirt right there, it's just like powder. Well, Isaac put his seed in the ground during famine time when there was no rain and he received a hundredfold in the same year with still no rain still no rain it's famine there's no rain to make that seed grow to make it germinate you have to have the water to make it germinate in the natural but not in the spiritual you know what Isaac, you know the key that Isaac had when he sowed that seed. You know what Isaac believed about himself. You know what he had a hold of. And he didn't doubt it. He knew he had the blessing of God on him. He knew the blessing of God was on him. He carried the blessing and everything he put his hand to would prosper. Simply because Abraham told him. Abraham laid his hands on him and says, I give you the blessing. Isaac, you have the blessing. So Isaac believed it. Now, do we want to believe what the Word of God says about us? We've got the Almighty Creator living on the inside of us. Amen? Amen. So I think He carries the blessing. <laughs> so I think He gives us the blessing. So I think now we carry the blessing. So we want to put our believing with it. See, Isaac didn't put that that seed in the ground and just forget about it he put that seed in the ground with expectation that he was going to receive a hundredfold not 50 percent not maybe some will come up you know i'm just hoping something happens oh god oh god oh god have mercy oh god you know you know i put all my seed in the ground it's all gone and oh you gotta and he, you know he didn't even get down and pray about it he knew he carried the blessing and he walked away from it in full expectation that he was going to go out there at the time of harvest and reap 100 fold so we want to put the seed in the ground not with a hope maybe so but a no so because I carry the blessing 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 hallelujah we want to put our seed in the ground with faith I want to I want to look at a scripture real quick in 2nd Corinthians so look there with me because you know you look and you gaze upon the word and it gets gets deep in your spirit and tonight, we are going to sow our seed, whatever it is. And this is the most sowing church, I'm telling you. I'm just so blessed by this church. It's just miraculous what God does here. But we're going to sow that seed tonight, realizing that we've got the blessing like we've never got before. I don't care how old you are in here. You get something in your hand. If your mama don't got something to give you, you borrow something from somebody until you can pay them back and maybe they'll just bless you with it if it's a quarter we're gonna put it in the offering tonight and we're gonna believe for a hundredfold blessing we're gonna we're gonna be God's children knowing that we have got the blessing that he imparted the blessing upon us that he gave us the blessing that the blessing belongs to us and we're gonna receive the blessing and he's gonna multiply the seed song to us hallelujah thank you Jesus because we've set our heart on him we've set our heart on his house just like King David did just like like Samuel did we set our heart on his house so 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 and I, I love this passage I love teaching on the Macedonians and, and how Paul used them in, in the the miracle in this place of grace that they stepped into and was teaching it to the Corinthians and to us today because here we have it but anyway we're just going to cut right in here to verse 8 and we're going to look at this and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency all sufficiency 
in all things, that you may abound to every good work. As it is written, he is dispersed abroad. He is given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. Now, he that ministers the seed to the sower, realize that the seed you have isn't by your strength and your ability, but by the blessing of the Lord, that he has blessed you with, with health, and he's blessed you to be able to go out and to work or, or however the finances come in. Sometimes they come in miraculously and sometimes, you know, we work for them because, you know, the Lord taught us not to be lazy but to be diligent people. But anyway, the blessing is from the Lord. He ministers the seed to the sower. Both to, for our seed to sow and both for the bread that we eat. He gives it to us. And he multiplies, he multiplies your seed sown. He doesn't just add a little to it, he multiplies it a hundredfold, a hundredfold. We look at the rich young ruler that came to Jesus. Jesus made it really clear after that rich young ruler walked away from giving everything. He came to Jesus, what must I do to, to, to inherit the kingdom of God? And, and Jesus laid it all out. You walk with me, you keep my commandments, you do those things, you be obedient to me. And the rich young ruler says, I, I've kept the law. I've done all these things from my youth. I've walked with you, God. I've kept your commandments. I, I've done those things. And, and Jesus looked down deep past all of these things and went into the heart. And he knew that the rich young ruler held on. He was holding on to his possessions. And see, the whole secret with God is you've got to lose to find. You've got to lose your life to gain your life. If you hold on to your life, then that's what you'll have, and you'll lose your life eternally. But if you give it all, you'll have a hundredfold, the Scripture says, in this life and in the life to come, a hundredfold. This is the promise. Do we have the promise? I have the promise, somebody's supposed to say, or at least most everybody in here. Come on. I have the promise. This is the promise. I have the blessing. I have the blessing. Amen. Yeah. We, we need to believe this. Because I walk in righteousness, holiness, purity, and truth. I'm obedient to the word of God. The blessing is upon me. Now, if you're walking in disobedience, ungodliness, and you're not, you're not obeying what the word of God says, you take the blessing off of you. That's your fault. God can't bless evil. He'll never bless evil. He won't. He won't take the blood and hide the evil. He'll wash away your sins and make you new and make you holy and righteous and pure and give you the Holy Ghost to lead you and guide you into all truth, not all sin, but all truth. And if you walk with him, you'll have the blessing. And he'll minister the seed for you to sow, and he'll increase your righteousness. Let's finish this. And increase the fruits of your righteousness right here. He'll increase the fruits of your righteousness so you can sow more, so you can give more, so you can bless more, so you can lay out these treasures. He will give you this seed so you can sow it into the kingdom of God, so you can lay up treasures in heaven. And then he'll supply all your needs. You'll have all sufficiency. Isn't that amazing? We have such a good God. We don't have to depend upon ourselves for anything. And when we need to, we can do just like Jesus told Peter to do. Go to the water, get the fish, the first one you find, open its mouth, pull out the coin, go pay our taxes. How many wants to find a fish to pay your taxes? Hallelujah. That's good stuff. <laughs> we can believe God. You know, you just think about it. I was just thinking today, I'm like, God has blessed us. He takes care of us. He takes such good care of us. He is so good. It doesn't matter where we're at or what we're doing. God brings the provision. As long as we're seeking first the kingdom of God, it is there. It is there. Now, we're going to believe God tonight for whatever you sow, a hundredfold of that tonight, so you can increase your righteousness and you can move out in God in a deeper way financially. But as we take a hold of this, this is in every area of our life. We just go, the blessing of God is on me. 
The blessing of God is on me because I'm keeping covenant. Because I have made up my mind I'm walking with him. I'm staying in the covenant. I'm not going outside the covenant. I'm staying over here in the righteousness and holiness and purity that he's enabled me to walk in. Hallelujah. And we just take this for our whole life and he'll increase every anointing, everything that he's placed upon our, our life. He'll increase it if we believe what he says. We'll take a hold of it. We won't have to come under any of the lies of the enemy. When discouragement comes, you go, nope, that's not the fruit of the Spirit. Nope, that's not what the Lord said to keep ourselves in. Nope, that doesn't line up with the Word of God. When, with any attack of the enemy, he, you know, he tries to come and, and scream and yell in your ear that you've got a problem and you want to go over and do something that is unholy, and you'll say, nope, that's not what the Word of God says. You'll answer him with the Word just like Jesus answered Satan with the Word. He lived by the word, and he was the word, but yet he spoke his spoken word right back to Satan. He spoke the word. He lived by the word. That's what we're to live by. We're not to line up with what the enemy's trying to scream and force in our ear and force down our throat. He's a stinking liar, and we're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and we don't have to come under none of his stinking lies. We can rise up and be mighty in God. And I just want to say tonight, rise up. Rise up and be a champion for Jesus. Rise up. Rise up. There's nothing in this life and in this world that's worth holding on to. Jesus will take you and make you a history maker. He'll take you outside of yourself, and he will bring you into having such a wonderful time here on earth, getting to do things in his kingdom, that you'll think, oh, my goodness, how in the world? How in the world did I get here? How in the world did this happen? This is so exciting, the things that God has enabled me to do. We don't want to be like most people. Just, you know, grow up, get married, raise a family, then rock on the porch, and then die. We don't, you know, we just don't. I mean, what is that? What is that? We want to fulfill the destiny and the purpose that God has placed in our life. To be the light of the world. To touch the nations with the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to just... Let everybody come and just rejoice and pour out your passion on Jesus and worship the Lord with what he's blessed you with in faith, believing, and knowing, and receiving. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In your presence, in the presence of my God. Yes, I am standing in your presence, in the presence of my God. Yes, I am standing in your presence, in the presence of my God. And I say yes, Lord, I say yes, Lord, I say yes, Lord, to your will. Oh, I say yes, Lord, I say yes, Lord, I say yes, Lord, to your will. I say we want to we want to pray for everybody. I know um, Pastor Mark wanted Joshua to pray for for Gabe, and you know, and we just want to give everybody the opportunity to come and receive from the Father. And if you want to get prayer, we want you to be prayed for. And Sister Nikki has something she wants to share really quick, you know, and it's it, it's just the truth, you know. People, and I'm just going to go ahead and share it. People are held back. Come here, Nikki. Just go ahead. When, 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 when we were worshiping the Lord, I heard, holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord, and holy, holy is his people. God so wants us to take a, a hold of who we are. We are his people. It's been said over and over tonight, don't leave here without grabbing it. I mean, if someone stuck out 
a thousand dollars in front of you and they said this is yours you're gonna like go over and you're gonna take it God is serious about this he wants you to take a hold of your identity he wants me to take a hold of my identity and that is I am holy Amen. he's made us holy so take a hold of that don't leave tonight without knowing what Christ has done for you if you're not sure if you don't know without a shadow of a doubt that you've been saved and Jesus Christ now is the greater one in you then come up here because God has a free gift it's not something you work for it's not something you earn it's something you take a hold of because it's given and take it now don't be denied don't let the enemy lie and maybe it's not it's more subtle maybe it's just a little subtle where you don't really know wow I'm holy when you let that revelation come Father, we pray in Jesus' name that the revelation of how holy you are and how holy you've made us comes upon us now. That not one person from the youngest to the oldest leaves here without the revelation of Christ in us. The righteousness, the holiness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There, there, there's people, though, that just come under again and again this thing of they're not worthy or, you know, they're just the one that, you know, God can't forgive. See, people have a hard time forgiving themselves a lot of time. Or, or you know, there's just something about them that they just can't ever be, you know, that passionate and, you know, have that deep relationship with God. Or, you know, they always have to just stay in repentance all the time and they didn't even do anything. You know, and, and God just wants to break that off. He wants us to come in that confidence. He wants us to believe him. He doesn't want us to be held back. See, these are lies of the enemy that will hold you back. And people sit in the pew for years and years or sit in the chair for years and years held back because of a lack of confidence in God. He's finished the work. You don't look to yourself. You look unto Jesus. That's what I, I preached on that last night. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. He's, he started it and he will end it. He started it, and he will end it. He is the beginning and the end of your faith. All you need to do is stay in him and believe him. We want to believe him. No more of this doubt and unbelief. No more of it. That's what it is. It's doubt and unbelief. The enemy tries to put it on you and hold you under, hold your head under the water with it so you're not effective in God and you can't, you can't move on. But tonight, in Jesus' name, we just thank you, Father, that that thing is broken. So if anybody wants prayer, we'll be glad to pray with you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name.